Today's new trailer presented a ton of new information, so we are going to go over it and pinpoint some things that I think that are of note and discuss the new gameplay elements from the latest trailer for Echoes of Wisdom. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so our initial opening of the trailer is just an introduction of a tour of Hyrule, which is uh, going to be showcasing the new locations or kind of like familiar locations that we've seen in The Legend of Zelda, especially as of late. Uh, we get this shot of the area of Hyrule Castle Town with the rift and how they've affected it as well with another shot that we've seen before of Zelda overlooking her kingdom. And here we get our first shot of Gerudo Desert, which is uh, showcasing a couple things of note. Initially, uh, the main thing to point out is that Zelda is overheated. So it looks like uh, a, a theme that will pop up uh, frequently in this analysis, I'm sure. But mechanics from modern Zelda games, i.e. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, are very prevalent in this trailer. And it seems like temperature is going to be another one of those mechanics that's going to be heavily utilized here as we see Zelda uh, kind of overheated and struggling in the desert sands. Uh, if we go forward, you can see her in Gerudo Town. She's going to be talking with some of the Gerudo soldiers here who are discussing the rifts. In this shot here, we see these tektite type creatures. They're not exactly like a traditional tektite, but that's the closest thing that I can think of that they are similar to. Additionally, if we look up here in our right-hand corner, uh, right-hand top corner, we are going to see some plume-like structures that are like have an exhaust feature for air, and with the triangles that are hovering around them, it looks like these are going to be um, another item that we can utilize as an echo. So this might be a way that we can uh, allow Zelda to traverse and have some uh, air travel through an updraft, so to say. In our next shot, we see Zelda going to an oasis type area where she's laying down on the bed. Now, I don't know because we can't see uh, because the Gerudo Desert uh, text up here is blocking the hearts, but I would assume this rest feature would allow you to regain health. Um, it seems like that would be what this mechanic would be for, but otherwise uh, you can at least lay down on the beds now. Additionally, uh, we have the area known as Jabul Waters, which is a name that is very reminiscent of Jabu Jabu or Jaboon, um, which are, you know, figures that are very uh, synonymous with the Zora and the water areas. Here we have a traditional Tektite. So I'm assuming those ones before were maybe like baby Tektites or something similar to there. But this area is very beautiful. I love how this works, uh, or how this looks rather. Um, here we can see the entrance to um, a Zora-themed area or some kind of water temple-esque area. Um, and these are sea Zoras. And we did get confirmation of there being, uh, you know, the two factions of Zoras. So these are the sea Zoras down here. And we have the river Zoras here. And they have two individual villages. They are separated. And it seems that there is some beef between the two and that they are feuding over something, most likely territory would be my guess. Here we have Elden Volcano. And if we go back, we can see the, you know, the, the enemies on the sides of the wall, the Moldurms. Um, there's some chests. And up at the very top, we can see the entrance to Goron City, which is very exciting because we have not seen the Gorons in this art style before. Uh, here we have Kakariko Village, at the foot of Elden Volcano. Um, of note here, there is, seems to be a well in the center, and I don't know about you, but the top of that lid certainly looks like it can be removed, so we might have, you know, some more well traversal, um, which is similar to Tears of the Kingdom, but more notably, uh, Kakariko Village and wells is, well, I mean, that's as about as Ocarina of Time as you can get. So I think there'll be something... Something tied to that, for sure. And here we get our first shot of a Goron, uh, which is, they're super cute in this art style. I absolutely love how they look. Another callback to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is we can see Rockros up here, uh, which is the, you know, main food item of the Gorons. It's the main things that they eat. 
And uh, yeah, we have like a figurehead here of uh, of the Gorons uh, talking about those rock roasts. This area here is the Farren Wetlands, an area I am very excited to traverse because they have uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite species, races, whatever you want to call them, from the entirety of Zelda. The Deku Scrubs are back. I am so excited about this. This area looks awesome. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of cool things in this area specifically, uh, but the vibes are immaculate. And here we can see a Deku Scrub that looks like Vileplume. Um, and it seems like there's a common theme with the Deku Scrubs in this area. They all have like different uh, foliage for like their hair. So it seems like there's going to be like a wide variety of appearances for the Deku Scrubs, which I think is a really cool touch. Um, kind of similar to how we saw the Koroks in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom with their, you know, different leaf shapes and expressions that they had on those. So this seems to be kind of a similar motif that they're doing there. But here we can see Zelda talking to one of these Deku Scrubs, um, talking about how they don't get a lot of traffic here. But uh, here is another shot of a different Deku Scrub, and it seems that they have a bit of a sweet tooth. Uh, at least that's what was said in the video. So um, I saw someone, I can't remember who it was, refer to these as looking like um, like spider webs. So perhaps in traditional Zelda fashion, we might be getting an area where the main enemy is a Goma or some kind of Skullchiller or something like that due to the appearance of these spider webs and these, you know, cotton candy looking things that are, well, they say cotton candy, but that looks very spider webby to me. But additionally, we, you know, we get uh, a new, uh, a few different uh, hairstyles to have on these Deku Scrubs here. We see this one on the left with the Mohawk, uh, the one on the right with Space Buns, and then a more traditional looking Deku Scrub up at the very top. But it seems to be a lot more individuality with the Deku Scrubs this time around, which is really cool because, again, one of my absolute favorite all-time Zelda races. I cannot believe after, you know, almost 20 years, these guys are finally back. I, or no, more than that. Yeah, like 24 years. Because I think Majora's Mask was the last time we saw them. Anyways, I'm uh, getting sidetracked. You'd never guess it was made out of spider webs. Let's look at that again. You'd never guess it was made out of spider webs. So yes, definitely seems like Gomas or Sculptulas are going to be the main they're going to have some kind of importance in the fair and wetlands and that uh that is on on par for what you would expect out of zelda moving on here we have someone in uh, presumably kakariko village uh stressing about their cuckoos being lost it looks like uh, here we have another gerudo and here is something that i think is very interesting because we've never seen this in anything outside of uh, 3D Zelda, and more specifically, our recent Zeldas. But we have a quest log now, and not only do we have main quests, we have side quests as well. And the quest log looks and functions very much the same way that it did in Tears of the Kingdom, it looks like. Here we can have a look at a few of the quests that are available through the main quest. Ancestor's Cave of Rest Rift, a rift in the Gerudo Desert, searching for everyone, the mysterious rifts. So seems like it's going to play out a lot like how Tears of the Kingdom did, where you may have like a generalized quest for the entirety of the game, like searching for everyone, how that was related to uh, searching for Zelda. Um, and then you will have more centralized main quests for specific areas of the game. At least that's the way that it looks, just going off of what's listed here. And here we have some of the side quests, which, you know, it seems like they can vary in what you're doing, but it seems like these will be more menial tasks and stuff that will challenge your brain to use the new gameplay mechanics in a way to um, to achieve whatever the objective is. Very cool. And here we see, you know, again, like you would see in Tears of the Kingdom, uh, you know, thought bubble with uh, an exclamation point. Was I seeing things? This Gerudo lady was talking about tornado ghosts. And additionally, we have, you know, Gorons here talking about the same thing. You know, we have this villager in uh, what looks like uh, Hyrule Castle Town. Um, inter interestingly enough, we have what looks like CDI Zelda over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> on the wanted poster. Her nose is giant, man. They did her so dirty on that. She looks like CDI Zelda in that. Tell me if I'm wrong. But there is a cute dog. Please let us pet it this time, Nintendo. I don't know why you wouldn't let us do it. But yes, uh, this is just to showcase more of the uh, side quests. And travel waypoints work exactly how you think they would. These are waypoints that are taking the place of weather vanes, shrines, fast travel locations. Um, you know, you activate them and they just open up a fast travel location for you. This one here is appearing at the top of Elden Volcano near the entrance to Gerudo City. So these are going to showcase a lot of things. The map, interestingly enough, I did want to point out because there is a few things that we can take note of here. Rifts do appear on the map. Uh, in addition to uh, this new village that we have down here, Southern Village and then Southern Beach, which looks like it may connect over into the Gerudo Desert area, as we can see from this uh, this cactus palm fruit type uh, image over here. So there is some sort of connection to this. I've seen a lot of people say that the boundaries of the Link to the Past Hyrule have been uh, expanded heavily, and that appears to be the case here. Again, this is showing the warp points to said specific areas, that Southern Prairie. Uh, additionally, this is something that I think is of huge note. Zelda took zero fall damage here, and uh, I think there might, it could be tied to an item uh, because there is an item that will be showcased in, in, a, in a section later on that has uh, ties to how you jump. So I have a, a sneaking suspicion that this might not necessarily be an intrinsic thing in the game where you take no fall damage. It could be an item keeping Zelda from uh, taking fall damage. But interestingly enough, uh, either way, we have no fall damage there. And we have the introduction of horses. Horses in a 2D Zelda game, uh, which this thing looks absolutely adorable, and the gameplay looks super fun for these guys. You can use a carrot echo to summon them, so it's not one of those things where you're going to have to, like, you know, trek down where your horse is, apparently. You're not going to have to run back to a stable. It seems to be you could be anywhere as long as you have the carrot echo. You can summon your horse, much like a whistle, but uh, it seems like you can do this from any point in the world. Your horse doesn't have to be nearby. And this horse specifically looks more akin to the horse that we saw uh, in Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild of Zelda's specific horse. But it seems there is a bit of variety there. This section here is very notable because smoothies are a thing in Echoes of Wisdom. And this seems to be the new cooking mechanic in a way to where you can gain buffs and uh, maybe replenish your health in certain ways, but you can talk to this business scrub here and he'll make, a, he'll make a nice frothy cold smoothie for you. So you can see here we have Electro Apple, Juicy Apple with a slightly electric tinge. You can use these, uh, you can use these ingredients to craft your own. And then it appears that after a while, you know, you will have the ability to mix and match and make other ones. We got a mixed apple smoothie. But here is a, another interesting thing in the shops. We have uh, what seems like a more return to form with item usage in Zelda, although maybe through a different means. We have these Zora flippers. Uh, these allow you to swim faster while you're wearing them. So this kind of gives me vibes of a link between worlds where you were able to purchase, uh, you know, said items uh, to use in the dungeons. This appears to be more of a situation of, you know, traversal around the world with a lot of these items. So we have, you know, the Zora flippers here, some kind of start or uh, seahorse item on the bottom left there. And then what appears to be like maybe stamina or magic. Um, and then your red health potion up there at the top. So a lot of different items in this. And as we'll see here in a second, we'll have a few items that to go through. So again, these are the Zora flippers. They up your swim speed. And then if we go to the next one, we have a Zora Scale, which is a familiar item from way back when in Zelda. This will allow you to uh, increase your dive time. So we have seen a couple segments of uh, Zelda underwater in these trailers before. So this seems like it's going to be a very useful item for you to have. So this will be a key item to use. But they have these listed as accessories because of the clothing options down here. So these are all going to be items it looks like you're going to swap out depending upon what your 
what what is required of you for that specific area. This next item is the Jump Height Frog Ring. A ring imbued with the spirit of a frog enables the wearer to jump higher. Now, this is something that I think uh, the fall damage might come into play with, is an item like this. Not necessarily this one specifically, but we can see that there is an item that alters your jump height, so there could be something that hinders you from taking damage, uh, from taking those fall, uh, those falling damage. My brain doesn't work. Distinctive heart design makes hearts appear a little bit more often. Doesn't give you an extra heart, it makes hearts appear more frequently. I'm assuming through the grass or through enemies or picking up rocks or what have you. Now this is where we showcase Zelda transforming and putting on this new gear. So customization of the outfits is another returning uh, feature from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And it seems like there's gonna be a lot of customization with what you're wearing and what you can achieve with those, with these specific buffs and abilities that these items present to you. In addition to just making a fashion statement and having a cool outfit. Here we can see Zelda without the hood, without the Helian hood on and her hair is in a ponytail. Super cute design. And then we have a Gerudo-esque uh, type of costume that we can see here. And I think they, yes, that was it. Um, now the new ability, Bind. Now, Bind is a very interesting new ability, and I say new loosely um, as we get on over to it. Uh, here is, uh, you know, the underwater section we were talking about briefly a second ago. But this section here is discussing about how um, echoes cannot be made of certain items if they're too large, and you cannot move certain objects if they're too large with your echoes. And so that's where this new ability, Bind, comes into play. This is Zelda demonstrating using the echoes. But Try gives you this ability, Bind, that allows you to grab items in an Ultra Hand-esque fashion and move them out of the way. This is extremely, extremely reminiscent of Ultra Hand, almost to the point where it's just, I mean, it's, it's just an obvious imitation of the ability. We can see that it has the same functionalities that we have with Magnesis and Ultra Hand as well, because we can pull items out of the ground like this chest here. And then additionally, to go a step further past Ultra Hand, this allows you to outright grab enemies. And this is probably the funniest section of this entire video. He just Zelda just drops this Lizalfos off the edge of Elda Mountain. Absolutely hysterical. Here we can see a Echo that would typically not be able to be touched because it would take damage from it. But through using the Bind ability, you can pick it up and now use it as a weapon. And we can take out these ropes and that Zol over there, but it doesn't go to it. And then there is another faction, or another function, rather, of this ability called Reverse Bond. That allows you to use Bind on Zelda as well as an item. So, for example, here, in this section, there is this moving platform. Zelda will use the Bind ability on this and then attach herself to it to move alongside the object. Which opens up a numerous amount of gameplay and exploration possibilities. Here we can see the same functionality. We've seen Zelda be able to fly from just outright grabbing um, a bird and the bat, uh, but it appears that you can also do this through bind. I don't know what the difference is in terms of functionality. Uh, maybe there is, uh, maybe you get a, a bit more longevity out of it through using bind or vice versa, but either way you are able to utilize some of these same gameplay mechanics through multiple means. Additionally, you can be drug around Hyrule. This one is really cool because using the Sculptula, you have the climbing functionality that we saw in the previous 3D Zelda titles. So there is a lot of functionality for modern Zelda gameplay design implemented into this game in a cool and unique way to give it its own identity while being extremely reminiscent of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Here we saw some of the uh, more gameplay and battle-centric uh, usage of the Bind ability, where you can call forth an Echo and, you know, remove the mole and then just drop the, the mob one directly into the hole and to get rid of them. So there's a lot of cool functionality from the abilities in this. 
Um, here we can see Hyrule Castle getting absolutely uh, evaporated from the rifts and uh, how it's overtaking Hyrule. And these new, um, I'm going to use echoes as the term here uh, for these enemies because we don't know what these guys are called. These shadowy figures, these shadowy moblins from the rifts. So very interesting to see what we're going to be able to do here. Um, here we also have uh, a shot of a, a Gerudo, um, a Gerudo figure. And uh, I'm assuming this would be the leader. She's using a trident as a headpiece. She looks like Urbosa. I mean, like this is this is as close as we're going to get to Urbosa ever again. Bring back mommy, please. Uh, anyways, uh, but the final shot we get here before it goes back to the title screen is try opening up a portal into the rift. I'm assuming this is how we are going to be able to get into those sections of the game that are going to revolve around traversing in the rifts. Very cool. A lot of new information in this trailer. Uh, tons, a ton of new stuff, man. There's so much in this. Um, I can't wait for this game to come out. September 26th cannot get here fast enough. I'm going to try my best to uh, to make some content on it, but I will be out of town when this game comes out, so that's unfortunate. But regardless, we will be talking about Echoes of Wisdom and everything about it because I think this game is going to be a huge hit, and I think it's going to be... Uh, very, very fun and have some longevity to it that we wouldn't see in previous Zelda games. But that's going to do it, guys. Uh, this is a very quick rundown analysis of this trailer and just some things that I wanted to point out. I'm sure there's a ton of things I missed. So if there's anything that you think is of note, please let it know. I can't talk. Please let it be known in the comments down below. That's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into this. And if, uh, if you have anything that you noticed please let us know that'd be a big help subscribe if you haven't already for more zelda echoes of the wisdom echoes of the wisdom bro i have talked way too much today subscribe for more echoes of wisdom content and more zelda content in general if you would like to see that and until next time i will see you in the next one